come to the third dimension. The war in Yemen has hit a grim milestone extending for a decade with prospects for peace remaining distant despite international mediation efforts. The involvement of the Houthis in the Gaza war and now the escalation in Lebanon have significantly harmed the process of peace in Yemen as the threat of a full-blown war in the Middle East is looming. While the United Nations, along with the United States, Saudi Arabia and Oman have played a central role in bringing the Yemeni parties to the negotiating table to achieve relative calm, there is a growing concern that the Houthis' involvement in the Gaza war and now Lebanon could undermine years of diplomatic efforts aimed at restoring peace in the country. To discuss this topic joins me from London Dr. Elizabeth Kindel. Dr. Elizabeth Kindel is the mistress of Girton College, Cambridge University. She is a senior Yemen and Middle East analyst. Dr. Kindal, welcome to the programme again. Thank you very much for the invitation. If we could start from uh, yesterday's development, Dr. Kindal, okay, the Israel or the Israeli uh, military launched a second strike on Hodeida port, and this is another repercussions of the Middle East tensions, okay? The question is, how do you read this within the dynamics of the Yemeni conflict? I think within the dynamics of the Yemeni conflict, it is another blow to the possibilities of achieving a domestic peace in Yemen. It's quite early to say what it will do for the Houthis themselves. On the one hand, they can now frame themselves as the defenders of not just Palestine, but also Lebanon, as those who stand up to Israeli aggression and therefore bear the consequences. But on the other hand, as the repercussions of Houthi actions come back to haunt those inside Yemen itself, and Yemen itself is bombed, they may well also start to lose support. So it's a little early to say. Again, uh, Dr. Kindal, where, uh, in your opinion, uh, where do you think this kind of Israeli Houthi uh, escalation might go from here? I think that the Houthis are not in a mood to step down. They will, of course, be calibrating carefully how they go forward with Israel, knowing that the message from Israel has got through that no place is too far, no location is too distant to hit. But the rhetoric coming out of the Houthi leadership is still very belligerent. And of course, they did fire missiles at Israel over the weekend and their missiles are becoming more and more sophisticated. They've fired over 220 drones and missiles at Israel to date. And I think that they feel that they still like to live up to their slogan, which of course includes the words, death to Israel, a curse on the Jews. I would say that the Houthis are trying to provoke a broader war, but at the same time, perhaps flexing their muscles, preparing to uh, per perhaps preparing to take more of their own territory that they've been aiming for in Yemen itself. And if forced, I think they might go back on the offensive inside Yemen as well. Now, uh, Dr. Kindal, uh, the New York Times commented on the first Israeli strike on Hodeida port in a very detailed article saying that the Israeli attack harmed civilians, not the Houthis. How do you comment? I think the message that Israel has been keen to convey is that if you harm Israel 
if you attempt any aggression against Israel, then Israel will hit back harder and disproportionately. And I think we've seen that Israel is not allowing civilian infrastructure and so-called collateral damage to get in the way of its punishment attacks. So the message from Israel is clear. Do not mess with us or we will do worse to you. If I were living in Houthi controlled areas of Yemen right now, I would be very concerned about the kinds of retribution that the Houthis might provoke onto my country. Now, if we move uh, Dr. Kindle within the context of the Middle East uh, escalation and the Houthi Red Sea attacks, now almost 10 months have passed since the US and the UK launched their airstrikes on Houthi military capabilities in Yemen, okay? Now, one Yemen expert said, Nick Brumfield said, in fact, those strikes haven't deterred the Houthis, but emboldened them. What do you make out of this? That sounds like a reasonable assessment. Our experience of the Houthis is that they are not deterred by military force. After all, they've been at war now with a Saudi-led coalition for the best part of 10 years. And despite over 25,000 airstrikes by Saudi Arabia and its coalition against the Houthis, they have been undeterred. And of course, the United States and United Kingdom have also been launching airstrikes against Houthi targets in Yemen since January. That does not seem to have deterred them either. So it's perhaps unlikely that Israeli strikes will serve to deter them. It depends how concerned Israel is about killing civilians and damaging infrastructure. It may be that the Israeli strikes are less, uh, less concerned about the damage they could do to civilian targets than the US and the UK, and at least towards the end of their campaign, also the Saudis. And of course, Israeli intelligence is extremely sophisticated, and it could be that their targeting is, is more successful. Uh, it's hard to say. But to sum up, to date, there's no indication that Houthis are deterred by military aggression against them. Now, uh, as you have raised it, uh, Dr. Kindal, that the, although the US and the UK have been doing this uh, airstrike campaign against the Houthis, but, the f but it's true that they have refrained from attacking Hodeida port, okay, thinking about what we call the uh, humanitarian consequences. Okay, now it seems even the international community is silent about it. And you may remember what happened in the 2018 battle of Hodeida, when the entire international community warned when the joint forces were about to liberate Hodeida. What is happening now? I think you're right to draw attention to this seeming contradiction on the part of the international community. Yes, there was a time when the Saudi-led coalition was keen to push the Houthis out of Hodeida port in 2018, and it was the international community who said, no, you cannot commit any aggression against Hodeida port because of the consequences that that would have on the humanitarian situation in Yemen. Now, we do seem to be seeing a double standard. And I think there are a couple of reasons for that. One is that the blockade has been lifted against Yemen, pretty much. And so there might be the feeling that there's an excuse that, well, some aid is still getting in. Uh, they haven't completely crippled the port and there's no ground offensive. But I think far more likely is the fact that the international community is quite focused on what the Houthis are doing to them by attacking shipping in the Red Sea and the knock-on effects that that is having on global trade and, of course, the economies in 
uh, the United States, United Kingdom, and in particular in Europe and the West. So they're pretty keen for blows to be struck against the Houthis in a way that perhaps they weren't quite as focused in 2018. Uh, let's now move to the uh, current status of the Presidential Leadership Council, uh, Dr. Kindal, as we are talking about this escalation and also opportunities of making peace, okay? So, do you think this fragmented PLC can make peace or even conquer the Houthis? I think that's very difficult to envisage. The PLC, the Presidential Leadership Council, is in a difficult position. Um, with regard to these latest attacks, on the one hand, it will be pleased to see Iran's axis of resistance, including the Houthis, start to uh, sustain serious damage. But on the other hand, it doesn't look good for it if it seems to be siding with Israel. So, and it's very hard for it to condone the bombing of Yemeni infrastructure and not just Houthi military targets. And I think that the PL weaknesses are becoming very clear now. Um, for a start, its narratives are diffuse, its narratives are weak, um, and it has uh, not very strong international presence. The PLC is divided amongst itself as well. It has different goals amongst its eight members. And, and of course, we have these parallel governance structures in Yemen. Although the separatists in the South, the Southern Transitional Council are part of the PLC, at the same time, they have their own goals. And the leadership and military structures in the south of Yemen in particular are tangled up. There are parallel structures. So it's, it's a very disjointed and weak formation. By contrast, the Houthis are looking in quite good shape. They have a single voice. Their narratives are very strong. Their propaganda machine is excellent. And they show no fear of those who try to put pressure on them, like the United States, uh, Saudi Arabia, um, and their allies. They probably think that they've won the civil war in Yemen, and to a large extent, they've extracted many concessions. And the more the threat they threaten, the more concessions they get. So, in short, the PLC looks weak, the Houthis still look strong, and the United Nations roadmap to peace in Yemen is in real trouble. Uh, uh, let's now move to uh, an important point and it touches your own uh, uh, interest and specialization as uh, an expert in the jihadist uh, uh, entities, uh, Dr. Kindal. And uh, a confidential report by the United Nations sanctions monitors last week, published last week, revealed that Iran and Hezbollah enabled the rise of the Houthis. And for us, this is a common knowledge now. What was striking, Dr. Kindal, is that that UN report, okay, uh, raised concerns about the growing collaboration between the Houthis and Al-Qaeda. And they specifically referred to the terrorist Somali Shabab. So what is your assessment to this kind of collaboration? The collaboration of the Houthis with partners that are extreme, jihadist, Sunni, is not surprising because the Houthis are pragmatic in how they deal with their alignments and partnerships. We already saw that by the fact that the Houthis at the very beginning of the civil war in Yemen, aligned with the former president, Ali Abdullah Saleh, who had fought six wars against them previously. Nevertheless, they didn't mind forging uh, together with him a partnership in order to combat their great enemy at that time, the Saudi-led coalition. So no surprises to see the Houthis start to collaborate, perhaps um, with al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and also with another al-Qaeda offshoot, al-Shabaab. And I think um, this is a way of extending the Houthis' reach. And for the Houthis, their greater enemy 
Israel and America is more important than their age-old animosity with uh, jihadi Sunni groups like al-Qaeda. We are seeing this kind of tactical collaboration inside Yemen, not just with al-Shabaab in Somalia. It's no secret that if you look at the attack record of the Houthis, they have launched no attack um, against al-Qaeda and Al-Qaeda has launched no attack against the Houthis since June 2022. Of course, Al-Qaeda is still attacking, but it's attacking uh, power structures and southern separatist militias in the south. That's where it's focused. We've also seen Al-Qaeda inside Yemen create uh, more havoc via drone attacks. This is a modus operandi normally used by the Houthis. Al-Qaeda has been using drone attacks since 2022, um, but has used 12 drone attacks so far this year. And of course, Al-Qaeda propaganda has become slightly more tuned in to Houthi propaganda. We've seen new designs of Al-Qaeda operational claims, and they're using vocabulary that is more reminiscent of the kinds of Houthi war propaganda and statements given out by Yahya Sariya. So uh, I don't find the collaboration a surprise, and I think that there's strong circumstantial evidence for it. Now, Within this context, uh, Dr. Kindal, Yemeni still hope uh, for peace, okay? But uh, in view of this uh, Middle East escalation, okay, now the Red Sea crisis has arisen because of the, uh, uh, what the Houthis claim they are supporting uh, Palestinians. And now, okay, in the Houthis uh, statement, as if a new front has been added, which is Lebanon, because we already understand the bonds which link the Houthis to Hezbollah. In fact, reports uh, yesterday suggested that Iran, after the blows that it got in Lebanon, they might lean on the Houthis, okay, to fuel this kind of regional conflict, okay. Within all this, so uh, how can Yemenis get peace, especially when the international community, okay, focus has shifted from supporting peace process to containing the healthy threat? I don't see much hope for a peace process in Yemen currently. I think it's fallen off the international agenda much more concerning for the international community, sadly for Yemenis, is simply the need to remove the Houthi threat as part of Iran's axis of resistance and not because of the trouble it's causing inside Yemen itself. And, and inside Yemen itself, I, I have to say the Houthis you know, do not look like a group that's seeking peace or hopeful of making some kind of peace process work, even if it has, even if the Houthis have been talking to the Saudis, it's probably far more about trying to assist the Saudis to find an elegant exit from the war, which would then leave the Houthis open to resuming their activities inside Yemen and perhaps fulfilling their ambitions to grab some of the more resource-rich areas of Yemen. The Houthis have been recruiting on the back of the Palestine conflict and will probably now do so on the back of the Lebanon conflict. In fact, if I had to sum up, I think we're seeing an escalation that probably will drag Yemen further into a regional crisis. Everyone keeps saying, there's a risk of a regional conflagration of this war. The Houthis themselves are saying that, perhaps even wishing for it. But if we were looking at today from a year ago, we would think that we're already there. There is already a broad regional crisis. Versus a year ago, we don't just have a conflict between Gaza and Israel. 
Israel has now gone after the West Bank as well. It's bombing Lebanon. We've seen uh, Israel. Uh, we've seen Iraqi and Syrian militias involved. We've seen attacks inside Iran itself, with the killing of Ismail Haniyeh. Yemen has been dragged in. The Houthis are willing a broader conflict, and the United States and the United Kingdom are dropping bombs on Yemen. So, if this isn't a broader regional war, then I don't know what is. Although that doesn't mean it can't get worse. It can certainly get worse. So, with this, we come to the end of this conversation, Dr. Kindal. Thank you so much for talking to Yemen Today TV, and thank you for your time and insights. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. That's all for this time. See you next week with a new edition of The Third Dimension.